As an OEM, electrical designer or electrical installer, you probably work with enclosures every single day. But with the myriad options that are available to you, how do you make sure that you specify the right product for your application? You've got metal versus plastic, you've got different internal mounting options, and you've got special safety requirements which you may need to consider. In front of us today, I've brought along a range of products which are available on the market. We're going to look at how each one has been designed with specific applications in mind and where they may be more or less suitable. We're going to look at the material constructions, we're going to look at the customisation options which may be available, and we're going to look at how they might take the knocks from day-to-day -day life given where they're going to be installed. We'll start off with the lower end of the range, which is polystyrene. Now, polystyrene construction, it is cheap, which means that you can get a lot of them very quickly. They're normally slightly smaller products with lower ingress protection ratings, and they'd be used for internal wiring applications, normally in an office, something like that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with them in terms of a office use or internal application, but when it comes down to high flow traffic, because of the lower tensile strength of the material, you maybe wouldn't want to put it where it might get knocked easily. The next step up would probably be ABS. We'll have a look at this, which is a TG box. We'll actually come back and look at it later when we're talking about customization options, but for now we're using it for the ABS construction. ABS is a lot tougher. It'll withstand the majority of knocks that you'd expect an enclosure to receive. ABS is fantastic in terms of strength, but it's quite easy to manipulate, cheap to manufacture, which keeps the unit price down. Now, while you can get really good IP ratings with this, it's not the best in terms of UV protection. So again, unless you were going to have it sheltered from the sun, you'd probably shy away from using this as an external installation. This brings us on to the bad boy of the plastic world. You've got your polycarbonate. It's incredibly strong to the point where it can withstand pretty much any knock until you're getting into vehicles or incredibly hard wearing industrial areas. Depending on the options and where you're going to put it, you can have IP protection in this particular example of an A-box up to IP66, but you could even get it as much as IP68, which would make it suitable for full submersion. Polycarbonate would be slightly more expensive per unit, but if you wanted an enclosure which will give you the highest level of protection for both internal or external use, this is definitely the one you'd go for. Now obviously there are some times when what you need is sheer, unadulterated protection from large knocks and big industrial areas. It's these times that you're going to move to the more heavy duty products. Traditionally, metal would be the only way in one of these environments. Most commonly steel, which can take pretty much any knock you want to throw at it. It tends to look nice, which is often a key consideration, for especially when they're going to be visible. And it will offer year-on-year -year protection, unless it does get damaged. A slight scratch on this surface, and you've got corrosion issues. If you do get a large knock from a lorry or anything else, it will dent, which again will cause corrosion issues. The box itself is incredibly heavy, which does not lend itself to easy installation. Often, even for a box this size, you'd be looking at two people to install it. And when you look at the size of the some external enclosures, you'd need three, possibly even four people. One last disadvantage is being metal, you do have conductivity issues, which means you need to take time earthing the box with every single application. And especially when you're looking at something like trackside, where there's a lot of electricity around, it's probably not the best mix. So, this is why we have GRP, which is becoming far more popular with heavy duty applications. As you can see, for a start, it's a lot lighter. And internally, because it is moulded, GRP being glass reinforced polyester, it's easier to customise your mounting options and just give people a little bit more flexibility in terms of installation. The construction of this is so strong, its tensile strength is really not far off the steel. However, if it does just get a light scratch, it's absolutely fine. It's UV protected, and obviously you have no earthing worries with this. It's so tough, in fact, that what used to be considered the realms of cast iron applications, this thick-walled GRP enclosure, in fact, is used for going on the underside of tankers and other large vehicles. Now that's tough. So once you've chosen your materials, what you need to start thinking about is what's actually going to be housed inside. These are more than just boxes, as we've already discussed, and each one may be more or less suitable for different housing options. Maybe you need to house a PCB, 
maybe you need to secure a terminal, or maybe you'll need a DIN rail to mount some electronics, maybe even a digital screen. Now, different applications require different things. Therefore, different enclosures offer different things. If we just take a look at the inside of some of these boxes, hopefully we'll start to see the difference. We'll begin with the AKE distribution box, which has been designed to fix a DIN rail at the bottom, which can then mount to an SRB or an MCB, something like that. Sometimes people might even mount a digital display in here. There are a lot of options. Next we come to the IBT and the IBtronic range. Now these are enclosures which have been designed specifically for precast concrete. They fit within the steel structure prior to the concrete being poured. You can pre-wire it, pre-install it, pour the concrete, open them up and then do all the wiring you need to which massively saves time during an on-site build. The IBtronic's perfect for down lighting, can fit in the roof of the structure and can hold one, maybe two light sockets depending on the size of the enclosure specified. Then we also have the WKE, which is constructed from gyroplastic, which is low smoke and halogen free. Comes available with a lot of fittings, including ceramic terminal blocks. Now these enclosures would be specified for fire critical applications, such as emergency lighting, where they need to operate in the event of a fire. Depending on the requirements, this goes from E30, E60 or E90, meaning that the electrics will be protected for up to that amount of time. Let's come back to this one quickly. We've got some DIN rail mounting here. Moving over to the A box, and we can see some examples of terminals housed in here. Nice and smart, screwless connection, just pop your wire in there, slot this down, and that's your connection done. Now, if I can find it, I've got a great example of how you could just house a little PCB, different options which are available. Here you go. Little mounting points within the enclosure which will just let you put exactly what you need. Some enclosures have been designed with a specific application in mind, which means that they may come pre-installed. This one, a PV enclosure, specifically for photovoltaics and making a connection, has a special connector inside here which allow the wire to be pushed in through this cable gland and then clamped down with the wire and all you need is a screwdriver. Now, I hate to go all Blue Peter on you, but here's one I prepared earlier. As you can see, the wire goes through the cable gland, forms an IP68 seal into here and the cable retention on that is pretty solid. Now, of course, in this short video, we're not going to be able to cover absolutely every single thing that you need to consider when specifying an enclosure. For that, you need an expert, you need to sit down with them, and you need to get them to act as a solutions provider rather than just a product provider. Most good enclosure experts should be able to give you the advice that you need, but I do urge you to phone them up and see how they can help.